Hello everybody, today I'm going to be playing uh, Rabbits vs Sheep um, WSW, so here we go. So, for this video I'll be playing All Pick, Extreme, uh, Extreme Again, Upgrades Off, and Hard Bot Difficulty. So for my first round I'm going to play the Swashbuckler. I am not ready. So for anyone who hasn't played this game before, which be you done. probably haven't since it's in Warcraft 3, oh, cool. um, you get a hero that you can select or get it randomized. Then it with that hero, done. you <coughs> you um cool. you then uh, level up abilities and your goal is to beat the enemy. It so since we're done. playing against bots, um we are just against the default AI. Ideally, you can play five versus five, but that's not too, I guess you could say, expected in a bot match. So with the hero I'm currently playing, there's a couple of strategies you can use. Your first strategy is to level up your third ability to get the first blood guaranteed, or your second ability, rather. However, um, first blood does give you 500 bonus gold, so usually it's worthwhile. However, for this one, I'll just be doing it a second. Defending your name. So if you notice, there's these <coughs> gold treasure chests appearing. That's because of my Ahoya treasure map ability. So if I pick that up, I'll get the amount of gold that is displayed here. So if you look, it's 440. Defending your name. And if I were to pick that up, I'd get 440. So if you look, I now will automatically kill one of these guys. So I don't even have to hit them. Like, they'll just die. And ideally in the early game, you just pick up your chest as often as possible and then just cast a void treasure map every time you can. Of course, that's not too realistic. So, yeah, that's the basic strategy for this guy. You can skip your third ability, <coughs> and that will be the last thing you level up. So our cooldown's off, we'll pick it up, cast it again. And ideally you just do that <coughs> every time you can. Because if I walk over here, pick that up, 800 gold, and the cooldown's off in a few seconds. Of course, that's the thing. How much time do you have available? That sort of thing. So, ideally, you want to get enough damage <coughs> to one-shot every single unit. Uh, that'll take a little while. Let me face the Um, If you do end up dying... You can, uh, you will automatically revive with what it says is the complementary ink. However, if you play well enough, you shouldn't die more than once at least. If you look though, you will die sometimes, as you can see, I might die, so. So, um, you're, this hero, which is one of the reasons why I like him, gets 30 or 20% cleave. That means if you don't know what cleave means, that means when I hit a unit, 20% of that damage is transferring to a different unit. <clears throat> so, what would you ask? Hopefully, right now we've reached a point. All right, so I just leveled up at a. So I swapped my dirty fighting to sword and dagger to increase my attack speed, and I'm gonna use Fortuna, and that will randomly select a free bonus for you that will do something. So if you look, I got the cannon ability called Close Call, and yep. So the bot killed me, but now that I have some money building up, I will most likely never die again. So the way this works is every time I kill one unit, two appear on his side. So every time I kill one, two. And then you'll see that number up. So what we want to do is kill units as quickly as possible, and well that's really just the goal. So kill them as quickly as possible and try not to die. So what I've currently bought is the Harvester and uh, 10 Claws of Attack. You can get the Harvester by purchasing a Soul Eat Stealer and a Mana Blade. They will combine into one item. You can stack these, so if you were to say have six of them, you would be regenerating 6% of your maximum HP per second or per death of unit. Um, so right now, every time we hit, most of the units are dying. However, we want all the units to die. So we will. So the thing I'm going to upgrade next, or purchase next, is a mirror guard. Um, what this does is it um, it makes uh, duplicates of your hero. So if you watch here, <coughs> these two guys will begin attacking, and they also have cleave, I think. 
Uh, here, we'll test it. Alright, so your illusions don't get cleaved, but they will keep your base damage, I think. So. Oh, and also, they get gunfight, and that actually transfers through, so they'll kill one unit a second. So, if you hover over stuff, it'll tell you how many times they can stack. So, the claws stack ten times, the mirror stacked uh, five. So, I'm gonna buy Gloves of Haste next. And you can see we're building up money pretty fast now. I also believe the cooldown for this decreases every time you level it up. So if you look, we are beginning to turn the tides. Uh, we have the null number, so we are actually killing them faster than them. And we are killing these guys pretty fast right now. So now that I have that attack speed, I'm pretty sure I'm hitting at maximum. So what I'm going to buy next <coughs> is Claws of Attack. So I can actually sell one because I don't need two full 10 stacks. Um, we don't really <laughs> even have to worry about money anymore, so our first ability is not really even needed. Oh, and so before I finish saying that, we won. So you can, <coughs> you can also random a hero, and <coughs> it does what it says, you random a hero. So for this run through, uh, this one right now, I will play as the... Uh, we'll play as Pit Lord. So, the way this guy works is he has Rain of Fire, that will shoot down waves of flaming meteors to kill units. He has Howl of Terror, that makes <coughs> all the gnolls on your side um, lose 100% damage. Or, you can I use Cleaving Attack, which is the same thing as the other guy, his attacks damage um, multiple units, and he gets 30%. And I'll describe his ultimate once we reach that point. So, unfortunately, we managed not to get first blood again, <clears throat> but that's kind of expected because when you play on hard, he gets bonus damage. See, so. Oh yeah, there is actually one other way you can win if <clears throat> if you uh, if you have a certain hero. Some heroes can kill enemies. And if you were to have one of those heroes, you would be able to go over and kill him. If you were to kill this guy three, four times actually, you could eliminate him and then the round would be over. So the way that works is actually uh, pretty simple. Um, if all the heroes are dead, so in this case you kill that guy four times, this guy, um, you would be able to win the round. However, it's pretty unrealistic for that to happen because the guy is extremely durable. He has 700 HP, and if you look, we're only hitting for 30. So even if we were able to hit him, we wouldn't be able to do very much. So this guy operates a bit differently than the other guy. He's not nearly as fast of an attacker. He also does <laughs> less damage to hit. So for this guy, we want to buy Hearts of Fire. It's an extremely efficient item. It gives you 4 health per second. And generally, that is enough to keep you alive. If you have 10 stacks, <coughs> there is no what way you will die. So the alternative way you can try to play this, it's a bit riskier than what I'm doing, is instead of going for health regen, which I believe is necessary, you can rush 10 claws of attack and 10 attack speed items. Because as I did mention, he has cleave, so if you do end up getting a lot of that, you can just kill um, everything. So it looks like... I will be what able to survive this door. not... No, never mind. Maybe? You failed. Okay, so we managed to live with 50 HP. We're going to quickly buy Hearts of Fire. But the guy's Bodish Bolt killed us. However, we now have uh, 24 health per second, as it says, and 300 bonus HP. So we're very durable. And now I'll show you what the ultimate does. So your ultimate kills a unit. And then it summons a unit called a Doom Guard. This unit's really awesome. He is sort of like a uh, junior pit lord. He can summon a Chaos Meteor. Um, he can cripple, so I'll show you what that does. If you cast it on an enemy, it will make them uh, their attack slower, movement slower. He can stun, which is pretty self-explanatory. He stuns. And then, as I said, he can cast speed. Oh, and he can also dispel magic. So if you're stunned, you can cast dispel magic on yourself, and the stun will be removed. Alright, so we're now going to start building up some damage so we can get to utilize this cleave a bit more. So it looks like our Doom Guard's gonna die pretty soon. 
Um, so we're gonna keep buying some damage at the moment. Waste my time. You know, eventually you reach a point where it's actually sort of inefficient to even cast a spell, because you'll be dealing more damage just by hitting them. So currently we can so if we hit this guy, that guy will die and so cleave is one of the ways to kill this game as a damage dealer. Um, what I mean by that is you're not using spells to win. Um, you can't purchase cleave unless you have at least two heroes. Two, uh, and one of them has to be a hero called the Traitor, and the other has to be a melee hero. So it's pretty unrealistic to buy cleave. As for heroes who have it as a built-in ability, I think there's about five, so not too many there either. So if you look, we're actually still losing some HP. So pretty soon we'll sell off our Heart of Fire. But first, we are going to make a Harvester. If you remember from before, 1% HP of maximum life and mana. So it makes it so you can cast your spells all the time. And then we'll be able to cast our ultimate again. So if you watch, we'll kill that, um, cast this again. So now that we have 10, our, the thing we want to buy next is a, um, we want to purchase, oh yeah, um, by the way, we are in the lead, so, the thing we want to buy next is, uh, Gloves of Haste, because our guy has really slow attack speed, so now that we're hitting pretty fast, the next item we'll buy is Mirror Image, I believe that's what it was called, yeah, so, this hero is pretty fun, and so now we'll pick up some Mirror Images, <coughs> So if upgrades were on, you saw that I disabled that, there'd be a little thing right here that increases units, um, maximum HP and damage. The reason I disabled that is it sort of makes uh, about 50% of the heroes useless. Most heroes have abilities that can kill units, but if you have upgrades enabled, those abilities begin to just not be able to kill units. And the reason for that is most abilities do like a flat rate of up to like 120, maybe 135 damage. So if these guys go over 120, suddenly you can't even kill them anymore. And it just makes it ridiculous. So, but if you do have that enabled, it makes DPS heroes like this guy even more important. Because these are really the only types of heroes that can do theoretically like 600 damage. So... Alright, so we've run two out of the five rounds so far. So for this round, I'm going to be showing you a spellcaster. I'm going to play this guy called the Farseer. For this guy, you want to pick up your wolves. That is your most important ability. These guys stack as many times as you can cast them. So if you can cast them 30 times, you'll have uh, 60 wolves up. If you can cast them two times, you'll have four wolves up. So the reason why I explain that is for anyone who's played Warcraft 3, generally when you have an ability like this, it replaces the old one. So like these wolves would go away when I recast it, but not for their deck. <clears throat> so the first knoll always spawns right on the exclamation point. And if you look, this guy just likes to spam his ability on us. And I think it does like 150 damage or something. So, <clears throat> so we managed to get first blood. So that takes us up to 600 right away. So a nice little start. And we can just keep casting our wolves, and that's really what we'll do for this guy. So the trick with wolves is to sort of space them out, because <clears throat> if you have... Uh, so what happens is, if you have 100% of the units on the map dead, you will uh, get a little bit of a bonus. You'll get like 100 gold a second. However, if any are alive, that bonus goes away. So the trick um, with this guy is to sort of space your guys out, and if possible, you kill 100% of the units, and then suddenly you're getting even more gold than you already were. So the items you want to buy with this guy are the 10 soul rings, or uh, 10 soul rings and 10 hearts of fire. Um, the reason for that, instead of the harvester, is because this guy doesn't do as much rapid killing. He does a lot more spell casting, so it ends up being a little more valuable. So we're going to buy uh, three hearts of fire. Um, once you have ten of each, you basically don't have to scan to eat your fountain because you're invulnerable. Nice. Um, chain lightning is a pretty good ability. It can usually kill up to like eight units at a time. So now I'll be showing you what this guy's ultimate does. Um, the way this guy's ultimate works is it summons three different people. One guy heals, one guy um, summons wolves. 
So every time this guy kills a unit, he summons a wolf. Um, every time... Yeah, I don't even know what this guy does. But... It looks like it does something. Um, and this guy right here heals you. So. Alright, so now what we're going to buy is... Um, one ring... Oh, wait a minute. Looks like that guy gives you a ability called Warrior Spirit, maybe? I don't know. So we're gonna buy some one rings and some hearts of fire, and that'll make it pretty durable. Watch out. So this guy is actually slightly unique, and if you were, you can skip purchasing hearts of fire and instead just purchase ten one rings, um, because this guy has a healing ability. Watch However, I prefer not to do that because if you're in a tight spot, it helps to have the regen as an ability. Or, or as a passive instead of a cast because if you were to get stunned and you had no HP regen you can just flat out die but if you have built in HP regen it negates it after like 10 seconds so you can also cast this on your wolves however generally your wolves don't die of um, HP they usually die of uh, time running out however if you look this one they die of HP so it is a possibility and what happens with this guy is they'll, your units will build up a little bit, but then you just decrease the number massively with your ultimate. So it's usually valuable to hold on to it, but since this is just a bot match, I'm not too worried. So I've cast it, these guys, this wolf right here. So obviously all the units uh, your ult gives you um, do stuff. However, the black wolf particularly will just destroy everything because it just multiplies very rapidly. So once again, uh, since I have some HP built up, I will use my abilities on a wolf instead of me. And those guys will just clean it up. So the next thing I'm going to buy is five staffs of Polymancer. The way this works is it converts them into a sheep for a certain amount of time. And that's actually pretty valuable because it will buy you time. Um, and that's really all you have to buy for this guy, realistically. However, uh, I'm going to play it safe and just purchase uh, ten of each. Now note, you won't have to do this if you don't want to, I'm just doing it to be extra careful. Alright, so here's what the heal does, it's actually pretty powerful. Um, it heals a uh, friendly unit for 500 hit points and 200 mana. So. so what I'm currently doing is I'm working my way towards the upgrade structure, which I'm close enough. You can then begin to purchase stuff here, which will give you an advantage. So. Yeah, and as you can see, you can begin to tell why I chose to buy all the life regen and whatnot. It really comes in handy. Yep, and he's a sheep, so that buys us five seconds. So all these do is they just give your units little buffs. So I just purchased one that gave me a lightning shield. It's a little bit of AoE. These all do cost money, though, so you have to make sure you have the gold for it. And it looks like we're about to win this one in a moment or so. Because all it has to do is reach 300 on their side. And it looks like we'll achieve that pretty soon here. And the trick to winning with spellcasters in 1v1 is just purchasing stuff. So if I purchase a whirlwind, that's going to help me a lot more than if I were to purchase a claw of attack. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> since I already showed two damage heroes, this time I'm going to show one more spellcaster. We'll play this guy called that's Avatar. <clears throat> So this guy, <coughs> this guy is kind of neat. He has two damage abilities. One of them does damage in an AOE around him. One of them uh, does damage a lot to one unit and then does a little bit of damage behind it. And then he also has a 45% chance to take no damage when he's hit. And his ultimate converts uh, the units that usually attack you into allies. So let's say there's a hundred gnolls around him like this. Um, well, that was a terrible example, but if you look at the mini maps, you can see. So they're all around him, um, and he casts that. Suddenly, he has a hundred null allies. So that's one of the cool things about this guy. So if you look, my guy actually has some pretty low base damage. So even with using a spell, I was not fast enough to kill it. A sound plan. So now here's the thing you have to keep in mind with melee spellcasters in particular. Um, if you let the units build up and you don't kill them fast enough. Um, it's not really hurting you, so to say, but it will give the enemy gold, and, well, when they have gold, you lose faster. So I believe the AI does cheat. I believe it does give itself, like, gold automatically. So, even if you do kill them all, they will, even if, um, I don't know how to phrase that. Ah, I got it. So even if 
they don't have that bonus on, they'll probably still be getting like a passive 200 gold per second. I'm not certain how I'd check that though. So once you get this ability to level 3, it will kill any null who's attacking you. So if you haven't realized yet, this guy will actually be very good for the harvester. Um, the reason for that is he does a lot more um, rapid spell casting, so the harvester is more valuable on him. Plus he does it AoE, so he has to get into like the thick of the fight, so to say. Yeah. So here's his second ability, shoots a wave out, anything directly behind it will take damage. So what's cool about this guy is um, due to the way his ability works, it heals you, so you don't actually even have to worry <laughs> about HP because the fountain will give you mana, and then when you kill the units, you'll also be healing yourself a lot, so you don't even, yeah, you don't have to worry. Plus it's a really cheap ability, it only costs 90 mana. For <clears> honor. <throat> So there we go. So we're gonna buy the mana blade for right now because we don't really need the HP. And then this guy is even more durable than most because since he has a 45% chance at max level here to not take damage, he really is. He just doesn't have to worry about life really at all. So here we go. And then now that we have the harvester, we can actually just go to buying support items now. So. If you didn't pay attention before, watch these numbers when I use this. Certainly. Suddenly that goes up and so does my health. Partly because of this, partly because of this. <clears throat> you can sell your ink and potions of healing if you decide it'd be more valuable to <laughs> just get a little gold. However, if you noticed with all like the other heroes, but like this guy, I ended up dying once. Um, it's usually more valuable just to hold on to them until you get some gold that is. So this time I'm going to mix up the items I purchased a little bit. Um, I'm going to pick up Crowns of Kings. Gives me, um, for this guy it's pretty valuable because it gives you 5 plus in everything. So once you have it at max you will be receiving 50 bonus points to all stats. Also if you haven't noticed, um, when you have 10 of a stack or whatever the maximum stack is, your um, item changes logos. So if you look, right now this guy's crown is a little pink crown or helmet if you want to call it that. And but once I put that at 10, suddenly becomes this gold crown in um, it's just the final form. So So now I'm gonna show you what my ultimate does. Suddenly all these guys <coughs> on my side. Now I could be wrong here, but I think it also does um, heal them full HP before getting into it. So Judgment is a pretty bad ability um, for just killing gnolls, however it's decent if you use it on the gnoll bosses. So the cool thing about the Crown of Kings is that um, when you're in the thick of a fight it helps to have damage, HP, and mana. Plus it gives you some attack speed as well. So here is why I'm not a huge fan of this guy's ultimate. It's neat. But the, it distracts the gnolls from hitting you, and you really just want them to huddle up around you with this guy. So, so while I'm stunned, I'm going to purchase some stuff here. So we're going to buy one of each, and then we're going to make an illusion. So I'll show you what Deception does right now. So it makes these little blue guys, um, they don't do any damage I don't think, but what they do is they uh, trick the bot <laughs> into <laughs> wasting hits on the wrong unit. Yeah, so you can see why this guy's ultimate sort of sucks, um, if you just pay attention right now. Um, he wipes out the units when they all huddle up around him, and his ultimate causes them not to huddle up. So it's really sort of just counterproductive. Now this guy is not quite as fast as the other guy, because his ultimate's way worse, but he's still a decent hero. The trick is just to use Divine Intervention as much as possible. And then we can also buy a lightning barrier to make it a little bit faster. Of course. Yep. And we won that round. So for our last round, um, I'm just gonna random. Uh, actually, you know, what? I'll show you the guys, the best hero in the game. Uh, it's Alchemist. Ready to brew. And so this guy round. is just ridiculous, and I'll tell you why. So. This ability heals you, it's a pretty average ability, nothing amazing, heals you for 
150, 400, and then whatever, 700 HP um, over like seven seconds or something. This ability um, gives you AOE, 50% um, increased attack rate, or attack rate increase tells you right here, and um, minus armor, so you take more, you do more. But the amazing ability is Acid Bomb. This ability does ridiculous amounts of damage. You got it. Well, now, I even with this cool. ability, the bot is super powerful, so we didn't right get first blood, but that's okay, because we don't need it. But Acid Bomb is just ridiculous. I'll get that mixed so up. So it hits up till it's unlimited right units up. it can hit. They just have to be near each other. Don't so if you me. watch. Alright, so unfortunately that guy's that getting that up. bonus I was talking about, but that's you no big deal. So watch this. These guys are taking damage. These guy, um, this guy's already dead, All right, and then this guy's gonna go be dead. <coughs> I'll shake that and right this, since this guy is a built-in heal, you got it. If you just chill at the I'll mana fountain, up. all you have to do is cast this you and then heal it. yourself. And then their little damage they do is negated, and the amount of time that buys you is enough for you to cast Acid Bomb again. So now this guy I'll does have a downside. Right He's heavily reliant on items. So if you don't get your items quickly, you could end up failing with him, and he might not be the best hero for you. However, as a whole, this guy is one of the no, best no. heroes. So just watch again, Acid Bomb, right it's all these units nearby, I don't even have to hit him, they'll just die. And then we can just right use up. Healing Spray, and that should get us near full HP. Yep, didn't even need an you HP pot or anything. Cool thing about that is if allies are near, you can actually hit them up with that, and you can just have your whole team chill them at the main time. So we'll use this again, heal them up, and then when we can, we'll use acid bombs. And then now that this is now acid bombs at maximum level, just watch how quickly these guys die. Okay. So it's pretty ridiculous. His ultimate's also amazing. It's it's the equivalent power of like a really good ability. But it also gives Don't you the me. bonus of... You got it. Yeah, that's really what it is. It's basically like having Acid Bomb on units that are near you all the time. So you might be saying to yourself, I said that Healing Spray is enough to basically you keep you alive. You never have to worry about it. And while it is, it is true, um, Heart of Fire is kind of cool. necessary on this guy due to how his second ability works. I'll shake that right up. Alright, so once you have enough hearts of fire, nothing will really kill you. However, you still have to be worried about these chumps, because if I don't get enough mana to cast Acid um, Flask, or whatever it's called, or Acid Bomb, I'm sort of screwed. So we'll cast Acid Bomb in this crowd of units. You got it. Alright, there we go, and that basically just saved us. You got it. Because in, you always have to be gaining money. The second you stop gaining money, you begin to lose. So... I'll get that mixed up. That's also you partly why <coughs> staying in one spot right can up. be difficult. He's super unit. Don't rush so. me. We're beginning I'll to reach a point right where his damage is being negated. Rush so I just have to reach 95 mana it. once again. I'll and shake I should that do. right up. You got it. So if you look, the little moles are blocking up. him for me. And we'll just cast that right here. You got it. And then these guys will all die. Don't rush me. All so right, here's why his ultimate or really requires... You'll about, you're about to see why his ultimate really requires the Hearts of Fire. If you look, we're doing damage, and we're doing a lot of it. However, we also took ridiculous damage since we were being amplified 50%. So that means that if you were to hit for 1 damage, suddenly you're do Actually, that was bad damage. If you hit for 10 damage, suddenly you're hitting for... Um, you're just hitting for me. I'm kind of lazy to do the math. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. If you're hitting you for 10 it. damage, suddenly I'll you're hitting that right for 15 damage. And that adds up really quickly how many little chumps are attacking you. So, yep. So another cool thing about this guy, which is why he's one of the best heroes in my opinion, is that <clears throat> when you um, use this ability, I'll your second one right, right here, um, your illusions will stay in this form until your illusion wears out. Normally though, your hero has a counter. That doesn't apply for illusions. Plus, your ultimate get that mixed up. burns with illusions, so it's better than most ultimates with them. So, now, we should be reaching a point where we don't really have to worry about um, mana, because we have a Harvester and Hearts of Fire. Also, if you feel really confident, you can sell your Heart of Fire later on, 
in favor of money if you really need it for an item slot. So I'm going to show you right now, once I get 3,000 gold, the power of this guy's ability. So here we go. We now have three members in the Rape Squad. And this guy is the only guy whose illusions gain splash as well. So these guys are just wrecking them all. And that's with oh, zero damage items. So we're going to pick up some damage items. Ten claws of attack, pretty standard stuff. And suddenly, I can one-shot all units. Right I was already pretty close to one-shotting him, but now it's guaranteed to one-shot. And it's just ridiculous. I'll also pick up ten attack speed items. So here's what I was saying about how at a certain yeah, point it can be worth it to sell some stuff. You also, it looks like this game's gonna be over. So. Oh, wow. Boom. And we'll cast this one I more time. These guys are ridiculous. Don't I can just stand over here in the corner, not even attack. And like, if you watch right the up. illusions, my old, this thing will wear off on me, but it will last forever on them. Because it sort of gives you like temporarily a new hero. Anyway, so that's how you win against a hard bot. You can use all these strategies as normal heroes. Um, the biggest thing in this game is just buying the correct item. So if you focused on what I've said and when to pick up the Harvester or Hearts of Fire and all that type of stuff, you will easily destroy anyone you play in this game, except maybe me. <laughs> anyway, normally you might end up playing all random or upgrades will be on, and I'll make the game ridiculously um, unfair for certain heroes and other heroes a bigger advantage. So for example, the guy we just played, he's fine. Upgrades are relevant for him. He'll still destroy them all with his illusions and damage. However, other heroes who only have a spell, so the guy Arthas we played earlier, he would be destroyed. Because once the units were upgraded twice, suddenly his abilities aren't able to kill. So, yeah, that's just a sort of a risk type of thing. Then if you look, we killed uh, 600 more units than the bot. And we won five in a row. And that's displayed here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll help you play this game if you ever find yourself playing it. Thanks for watching.